What's going on guys? Welcome to another Python Mathematics and Finance Indicators video. In this video we're going to be talking about the Gopalakrishnan Range Index, otherwise known as GAPO, and that's what I'm going to call it for the rest of this video. The GAPO uh, is intended to measure the volatility in a stock, and it doesn't incorporate volume. So you can think what you want about that. Uh, the only reason I throw that in there is that sometimes uh, either your volume information isn't included or you might not want to use volume or you might want to maybe add volume to the equation to make it that much better. But it's kind of neat when you can have an indicator that mimics volume yet does not use uh, volume. The calculation for the GAPO indicators um, is basically going to be the logarithm of the highest high for whatever time frame you're considering minus the lowest low for whatever time frame you're considering. Then you're going to do that divided by the logarithm of that time frame. So with that, let's go ahead and look at an example of this GAPO indicator before we get into actually programming it. So here's our charting application. If you want to know more about it, uh, check out our Python charting application tutorial video series. What? So we're going to look at eBay and so here we have eBay and down here we've got the GAPO 14 for eBay um, actually uh, never mind I thought I had changed it but no this is indeed the GAPO 14 uh, so uh, here's an example of the GAPO here and, and as you can see so as you know the volatility here in theory is going up you can not only see this in the chart price but you can see it in the volume where volume really spikes up there and price falls Sure enough, the GAPO is pretty high. Again, here, as it's very volatile falling, it goes up. And then as it's rising, you can see the GAPO goes up. And then uh, where you've got more of like a controlled, like here's a spike rise and here's a spike rise. Both times you see the GAPO spike up. Uh, then you've got a more of a controlled steady rise without too much change, and it's not so crazy. And then here, you, you could say that price is going up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. But for the most part, it's relatively stable in its little up down little process and as you can see here the GAPO kind of like levels out. Um, so with that let's look at another uh, GAPO indicator. Let's look at something like uh, Tesla would be a good one where it like kind of flatlined and then it went way up and then it's been going way down. Uh, yeah that's a pretty good one. So here's Tesla and as you can see I mean it's relatively stable here and then the price starts really rising and so the GAPO indicator goes way up, right? And then it starts really falling, and sure enough, the GAPO it stays up, right? Because the idea of the GAPO isn't really for trend at all, it's volatility. And here's a great example of it matching volume pretty well, where you know trade volume is pretty low, it's stable, it's low and stable here, and then it spikes up here with trade volume and price as it you know gains popularity or whatever. Uh, and really the GAPO indicator uh, is like pretty much right on par with uh, the volume here. Um, and then as you know the actual stock starts trending down the RSI starts trending down but the GAPO is still there because it's, you know, it's, it's volatility only. So it's a pretty interesting indicator actually. Um, it's just another one of those. I actually quite like the indicators that measure volatility without using volume. I think it's pretty cool. Um, obviously it's, it's fairly simple. I mean the stock price itself measures volatility usually without volume but still I like the indicators that do it. It's just kind of like a neat out of the or uh, like out of the box method uh, for doing it. So anyways, that's the GAPO indicator. In the next video, what we're going to be doing is actually programming the GAPO indicator in Python. And then the video after that, we'll, we'll plot it up uh, just like this in this charting application. So if that sounds interesting to you guys, stay tuned to the next video. As always, thanks for watching.